for number 10, the man catcher, otherwise known as your mother. Hashtag cougar. It was a non-lethal weapon used from the Middle Ages into the 1700s. With a spring-loaded opening, it would be pushed onto an opponent's neck, allowing them to be pulled from their horse and captured alive. It would mostly be used against enemy nobles who could be held for ransom. It was actually very effective for capturing prisoners. But let's be honest, the spikes inside are just unnecessary. For a time, police used them to capture pirates and highwaymen. They were not always used to hold hostages. Sometimes an enemy noble caught in the man-catcher would be dragged to the ground and beaten to death. This next one is really weird. Archimedes once designed an almost cartoon-like coastal defense. It was a giant mechanical crane that would hook onto approaching enemy ships, lift them into the air and drop them back into the sea, destroying the ship at once. The claw of Archimedes was built and used to defend the city of Syracuse, that the Romans were attempting to capture. In the end, Rome dominated the city, but it said the claw stumped Roman advances for a long time, and it got to a point where the Romans believed magic was being used to defend the coast. The claw was used under the cover of night to further confuse advancing Romans, but this tactic could only last so long in the way of an expanding Rome. When you want an effective gun but current technology only allows for one shot per barrel, what can you do? Well, you simply add more barrels. The Duxford pistol features four barrels, which are fired at the same time. It was designed for use on board a ship in the event of a mutiny or pirate attack to take out multiple threats at once. It was in use during the late 1700s when pirates were still so annoying for legitimate sailors. But there was one huge problem. It's really difficult to aim a pistol like this. Luckily, this strange thing was invented in 1834. The harmonica gun held a slide of multiple chambers, each containing its own projectile, powder and primer, allowing a much greater rate of fire. Just looking at this monster tells you everything you need to know. I would describe it as unnecessarily deadly, but there's a good reason behind it. This type of weapon was originally used on ships to fend off Japanese pirates. The head was designed to get caught on your opponent's clothing, especially their sleeve, to make them easier to defeat. The spikes on the side are to stop your target from grabbing onto the weapon, so it all has a purpose. It's not just that the samurai want to be Greek gods. Although used more to capture noble enemies alive, it's more than capable of killing, and quickly. Throughout history, sieges have always been brutal, but the Mongols took it so much further. They loved catapults and fire, which is a really annoying combination if you're a 12th century peasant. They would set fire to small animals like cats and birds and catapult them into besieged cities. They did the same with human fat. As flaming human fat rained down on besieged locals, they knew nothing good would come of it. And they were usually right. The Mongols understood psychological warfare, so they would brutalize those who resisted. Many of the most wealthy kingdoms from history have been Indian, and so they were constantly forced to defend against invasion. One of the weapons used to scare off possible invaders is a massive flexible sword. Like a metallic whip but razor sharp, it would be swung in a circular motion against large groups of enemies. Many had multiple blades, with some having more than 20. Only elite warriors were allowed to use them, as self-inflicted wounds could easily be deadly. If I were a medieval Afghan warrior and I saw someone swinging a 20-blade metallic whip, I would just run away. The trench knife is still scary, just a big knife, often with a handle shaped like a knuckle duster, which was mostly to assist grip. Below the grip was also a small metal nut. Any of these three attack styles can be deadly, but they weren't popular among soldiers as they were not as mobile as other knives. It's really only useful for combat, which was only one required function, but for close combat it was brutal. If there's one thing on this list I could avoid, I'd choose the war elephant. Just the idea of using elephants in battle is so maniacal, but they were used until the late 1800s. At that point, the psychological impact of charging elephants had been reduced by modern technology. If you shoot an elephant with a cannon, the other elephants can get spooked and devastate their own side. That's why elephants have always been just as terrifying when on your side. Elephant riders were constantly prepared to kill them if they begin to panic, usually by hitting them in their big elephant head. But war elephants would just as often tear through enemy ranks and crush anyone who doesn't run out of their way. 
Ali was the son-in-law of Muhammad. He was the fourth leader of the Islamic Caliphate, but while still alive, Muhammad gave him a special sword in recognition of his bravery. Usually depicted with a slit in the blade tip, Zulfikar became legendary in the Muslim world and is now associated with countless legends. According to some legends, whoever wields the sword will become invincible and gain great strength, which has caused some people to hunt for it. The sword is said to still exist and be kept in a secret collection. According to legend, it was created by gods to be used to spread the faith. Super guns are simply huge guns, massive guns that first took the form of siege cannons. The Ottomans were known for their terrifyingly big cannons, but these were dwarfed by the super gun scene during World War I. Some were so big its operators had to be in entire football fields behind the gun, and still cover their eyes and ears with cotton wool to stop them going deaf and blind. The Paris gun was so big its shells could reach the stratosphere, becoming the first man-made objects to do so. It was built to destroy entire cities, but was absurdly inaccurate. In 1988, Saddam Hussein commissioned a secret super gun project. Known as Project Babylon, its exact purpose is unclear, but they were building at least two massive super guns. It was a complete disaster and abandoned after two years. Remnants of the project were destroyed by the UN after the Gulf War. You just can't trust Saddam with a super gun. So that's the end of this video. If you want to support this channel, you can do so simply by leaving a like. And if you want more content from me, I have a second channel where I do different videos about different things.